Hey, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here about uh, 11 o'clock, a little after 11 o'clock Eastern Time. I am in Gulfport, Mississippi, familiar location, uh, ready for Gordon, Tropical Storm Gordon. Let me give you the latest on this. Not going to be a very long discussion tonight. There's not a lot of new information, nothing dramatic or different. So let's take a look at what we do have. And the satellite picture here from Tropical Tidbits. Uh, there's Gordon, the center of circulation, yeah, somewhere in here probably. Fairly disorganized overall, so that's good news. But there is some convection. Thunderstorms trying to pop up here. Still some of them uh, over Florida in the Port Charlotte area and then offshore here possibly associated with the center of circulation. Fairly decent outflow was noted earlier. It looked more organized earlier. Now, a couple of things that, ha that this has going for it. Uh, on its way into the coast of Mississippi here and beyond, uh, inland as well, and this will be an inland problem. Very warm water, 29, 30 degrees Celsius th uh, surface water. The upper ocean heat content is fairly adequate, and it's going to be just a matter of how much can this get its act together, develop that central core like it tried to do earlier. That was really impressive and kind of unnerving that it developed that little tiny eye right off of Marco Island. Remember that today? That was crazy. Uh, nevertheless, as long as it doesn't do that, it should stay, hopefully, just this side of hurricane intensity and not be too big of a problem. The biggest issues, heavy rain, already seen a lot of that down here in Florida. That will spread up to the panhandle and beyond the areas with onshore flow. You will have some storm surge as this comes up. And it could be three to five feet above the normal ground level, the water rising three to five feet. And it just depends on where you are. It's so hard to pinpoint exactly what's going to happen and where. That's why you have to be aware and know that this is coming and take steps appropriately to be ready. All right, so looking at the latest information from the National Hurricane Center, um, there's Gordon. This is the track map here. And you can see that they're forecasting it to make landfall right along the central Mississippi coast, which is where I am in Gulfport. Let's change this over to kind of this violet color. I am right here in Gulfport, Mississippi. So it's headed right for where I'm going to be setting up. I have a weather station, a nice high-end weather station with an anemometer on it, a professional anemometer. I'll set that up at the Gulfport Small Craft Harbor. And uh, we'll see what happens, see what kind of wind speeds we get. It'll actually be fairly high up, about 35 feet above the ground. And that's good, a good observation site. The hurricane warning is the area in red here. Tropical storm warnings are in blue. And that includes a good deal of southeast Louisiana. But remember, as this goes inland, there will be the threat of heavy rainfall. Severe weather is a possibility through here. And then even up through Missouri and elsewhere as uh, this decays away slowly. The atmosphere throughout this region is very muggy, so this is not going to just die off as if it was fall and there was a big shot of cooler air coming down out of Canada with a big trough or something turning this north and east kind of like Nate last year that came up out of the uh, Caribbean. This is still the heart of hurricane season and still very much summertime for the most part. So this is going to slowly die away and could bring a lot of rainfall in the areas, even inland, away from the coast. So please take that seriously. Interior Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, I think Baton Rouge, Lafayette, probably okay. There could be some rain and some squalls from this. No real wind issues for you uh, unless there's a, you know, a downburst or something from a thunderstorm or an isolated tornado. That's possible with landfalling systems. I expect eventually that there would be a tornado watch issued as this approaches the coast. So let's go back and read the public advisory. I want to point out a couple of things that I think could be very helpful. And uh, let's see, just real quick look at the stats. Uh, the air pressure, 1,003 millibars. So it's not that intense. The lower the pressure, the more intense a system is. Winds are about 60 miles per hour. Highlight these with yellow. 60 miles per hour is moving west-northwest at a fairly decent pace of 17 miles per hour. So let's scroll down. I want to show you the hazards affecting land. This part is so important. 
Because at the end of the day, you want to know, well, what's going to happen to me? What am I looking at? And this tells you about the storm surge. Shell Beach to Dauphin Island, Alabama, three to five feet above ground level. Navarre, Florida to Dauphin Island, including the Mobile Bay area, two to four feet. I might put a camera in Mobile Bay. We'll see. I'm thinking about it. Shell Beach to the mouth of the Mississippi, two to four. And then all the way over to the Louisiana-Texas border, maybe one to two feet. The Gulf of Mexico is easy to push around, and the shelf water is easy to surge over with just a little bit of onshore flow. Um, rainfall, you know, seven inches or so, four to eight inches over southwest Alabama. Um, and, you know, let's look at this a little bit more specifically here. I want to scroll down. Gordon is expected to produce additional rain accumulations of an inch with isolated heavier amounts through Tuesday over the northwestern Bahamas, so it still has an influence there. And then isolated maximum storm total amounts of seven inches are possible for the peninsula and parts of the Bahamas. Then, in the area that is headed for landfall, four to eight inches over southwest Alabama. All right, so if you're thinking about like Atmore, areas down towards Mobile, and you know Foley, Alabama, you know, four to eight inches possible. It depends on where those rain bands set up, and we don't know that in advance. And of course, this includes southern and central Mississippi, through northeastern Louisiana, Arkansas, you know, with maybe up to a foot, a foot of rain. Okay, that's not the worst ever, but that's something to keep in mind, and you need to be very careful if you're going to be out and about or traveling. And then, of course, tropical storm conditions are expected to begin Tuesday afternoon with hurricane conditions possible, possible by Tuesday evening in the hurricane warning area. So conditions throughout the day on Tuesday will gradually go downhill. The intensity prediction overall, yeah, some of the modeling indicating possibility that it reaches hurricane strength. Other modeling is not as robust. It all depends on how that inner core and the overall organization of the system can come together, fighting against the shear, uh, just other disheveling factors that are keeping this from rapidly getting its act together. But you only need 6 to 12 hours of ideal conditions or even better conditions than they are presently, and it could rapidly intensify 20 or 30 knots from where it is now. Make no mistake, that can happen. It can also, it's not going to weaken too much from where it is, but they also can, these small, fragile systems, weaken just as rapidly. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so the elephant in the room, so to speak, the next system on deck, of course, Florence. This is Gordon. This is from the 12Z European. I'm sure everybody knows all about this already. I'm just going to kind of go through these different frames and show you a couple of things as we move on through time. You see there's Florence. Just keep your eye on that one right there. Yes, there are other systems coming off of Africa that we need to watch. But our next system that really needs attention is going to be Florence. This is day five. There's day six. By the way, that is Bermuda right there. I'll leave it highlighted in purple. There's day seven, and look what happens. Big old area of high pressure builds out over the northern Atlantic, the northwest Atlantic, effectively blocking Florence from turning out to sea so that by day eight, nine, ten, it just, yeah. I mean, it's like that is absolutely, we don't see that very often. Is this what's going to happen? Uh, probably not. A ten-day deterministic model is not worthy of worrying about. What this shows me, though, is that the pattern of blocking from the Atlantic with this high pressure, one after the other, coming out of southeast Canada here, we don't have any big fronts. You don't see this vorticity signature of a big cold front coming through with a big low up here uh, to catch this and boot it off. That doesn't mean it can't happen. It's 10 days out, but we really need to watch this. And, of course, just looking at that 10-day time frame, yeah, you folks in the islands certainly want to keep an eye on what is now 92L, another disturbance coming, maybe more energy coming off Africa, and then a system. I mean, it's just going to be busy through September. We will watch this. We've got plenty of time. The good thing about social media and people paying attention to 10-day model runs, I know there's a lot of uproar from time to time that you shouldn't even worry about that, at least 
It has people paying attention. That's good. We want people to pay attention so that they aren't surprised. And, you know, whether or not they understand the context of it and how things can change, very few people are cowering in a corner after they see a 10-day forecast. And if they are, well, somebody needs to talk to them and tell them, look, that's just a possibility. Most people understand, ha, okay, well, we'll see how that turns out. It's 10 days away. That's what I want people to do. Just say, hey, it's possible. We'll see what happens. All right, so my plan, I'm going to get some sleep after I post this, get up early in the morning, head out, set up the camera systems uh, for our app users, Hurricane Impact, and our Patreon supporters and our members. You will have access to that. Uh, I will post information, a new blog, etc. in the morning. I'll do everything I can by myself to keep you updated. I'll also have the YouTube feed going from uh, the vehicle. I've rented a Jeep Wrangler for this, and I'll show you what's happening out here as I get going in the morning. A lot of work to be done, a lot of ground to cover. I'm up to the task. I'm very familiar with the area. I'm looking forward to doing my part to show you what this potential hurricane has as ter- in terms of impacts here in Mississippi and, and Alabama, even, as if I set something up in Mobile Bay. Have a good rest of your night. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Thank you for your support, all the new Patreon members. I appreciate it. It is making a difference. I am Mark Sutherth, HurricaneTrack.com. I have more for you early in the morning on Tuesday.